Here I am, just walking along the beach. Oh, what is that? That's a nice chess set. Oh, and the recording device. Well, hello there, recording device. And hello to anybody who may be watching this recording by the sea of this chessboard. Well, pawn to e4. Isn't this a great opportunity to show the greatest queen sacrifice in the history of chess? I think so. Pawn to c5. So let's do just that. This game was played in the Soviet Union between the brilliant Rashid Nishmetinov with the white pieces here, all the red pieces today, against Oleg Chernikov, a grandmaster from the Soviet Union. Rashid played knight to f3 and we saw knight to c5. Nishmetinov was the coach and trainer of one Mikhail Tal. And if you've seen some of my videos on Tal or you know anything about his games, you can maybe guess that Rashid had a very attacking, exciting style. And we saw that in full display in this absolutely amazing gem of a chess game. The opening stage, however, quite theoretical. d4 and pawn takes d4 and knight takes. So this is an open Sicilian. g6 going into some sort of dragon territory and uh, knight to f3 to c3 I mean, sorry. Uh, bishop to g7 attacking the knight with the other knight. So it's defended bishop e3 defending the knight once more. We see knight f6 developing, making ready for castling. Bishop to c4 all the minor pieces are now nicely in position and Chernikov castled his king to safety as we recommend and as was a theory at the time. Also theory was bishop to b3 just tucking this bishop nicely away maintaining its, uh, its scope of the f7 pawn and the black majesty while now being protected nicely by these pawns and being out of harm's way. And here we saw knight to g4. And you may say, say wait a minute, that's not defended. Let's just go ahead and capture that. And that is what Chernikov did. But with the knight moving here, this bishop now could see this knight, so that this knight could come in and capture that. Okay. We didn't see a recapture, no. Nishmetinov, Nishmetinov had other plans. For these two bishops, he does not want this bishop to be exchanged off for this one. Instead, he simply played queen to h4, looking at some sort of attack against the black king. Chernikov develops his queen, maybe looking to come over and defend, maybe looking at a counter attack. We can also see this knight is now pinned. We can't move because it's pinned to the king. 
the symbol however is the solution however is simple we just castle like this okay and here it was that history was made because Chernikov played bishop to f6 attacking the queen and maybe he was expecting the grandmaster draw with something like queen h6 and just going back and forth until a repetition was reached and it, the game would be a draw the game was not a draw no, the game was not a draw because we didn't see queen h6 no here Rashid Nishtmetinov fell into a deep think thinking for more than an hour on his move and when he came out of his deep thought he came up with the queen takes bishop are you ready now it's time for some chess action of course, we can recapture the queen. The bishop was uh, defended. But remember that Trinikov was a grandmaster. So he played what's known as a Zwischenzug, an in between move, and gave this check. So he retains the possibility to capture here, but he forces this knight. To capture his knight on this awkward square losing a move before he recaptures the queen like so and this knight is needed for the grand plan that you will see be unveiled now it is needed back on f3 c3 sorry because what is this all about it is about the king it is about the f6 square and it's about it's about activating these two bishops in this rook for a checkmating attack against the king and in order to do that we will need the knight on c3 so it can come to uh, d five to attack f6. Trinikov saw all this, played rook to e8, so that after queen d5, rook e6 protects the pawn. But remember this bishop here. We can go now to d4, attack the pawn once more. We go to d4 and attack the pawn once more. The pawn is defended by the king. So, we want to put maximum pressure on this pawn. How can we do that? Let's go with this rook here. So, rook to d1. And you see that despite white being down a queen and for a bishop and, and being down material uh, the fact that um, black neglected uh, controlling the center in this opening means that white has been able to make push all these pieces and control the center and have all these pieces attacking the king and um, and you see this queen not doing that much because it doesn't have any backup. This rook plays a purely defensive role. This bishop and this rook are not really doing anything. So Trinikov tried to do something about that. Played d6, trying to get this bishop uh, into the game. Rook d3. Bishop d7 and rook 
to f3, attacking this pawn. So, can that pawn be defended? No, it actually can't. There is no way to defend this pawn. However, black is up a queen for a bishop, so maybe it's all okay. How about getting this bishop involved in the game and attacking this rook? So that, that's what Chernikov played. He played bishop to b5. Rashni Neshmetinov didn't address this uh, at all. Uh, instead, he uh, first harassed the queen with bishop to c3, attacking the queen. And the queen moved back as though it was defending f6, so it moved to d8. Um, in reality, Rashid was able to come in with the knight and capture on f6. Because you see, getting a little cramped here, you see, if you capture, we have both the bishop and the rook lined up against f6, and you will lose the queen. So instead, Chernikov tried to do something about, in particular, this uh, very dangerous rook. Maybe we can harass it, maybe we can get it to move. Um, so Chernikov played bishop. e2 and um, now it comes the attack so all of this the queen sacrifice and the shuffling of pieces here that was to get the pieces into the perfect position and now we can play knight captures on h7 and that my friend is check check from this bishop and then you could say well I can get out of the check and I can capture the knight but no 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 because we would then have rook check and mate so that doesn't work instead we just saw king back to uh, g8 so how to proceed with the attack well, rook h3 is a good idea, because after that we just need to get the knight out of the way. Imagine there is no knight, we have a checkmate here, backed up by this bishop. And this, um, this can teach us about the relative power of the pieces. You may know that we say a pawn is one, Knight is 3, bishop is 3, rook is 5, and queen is 9. This, of course, is always relative to the position. Since this bishop is helping threaten this absolutely devastating checkmate, this is an extremely powerful piece, worth much more than the 3 points we would normally assign to it. So, Chernikov recognized this and played rook to e5. Now the bishop cannot see h8, so there is no rook h8 checkmate threat anymore. And you could say, well, I can capture this and I can win the exchange, but no, that simply will not do. We need this extremely powerful bishop to have the checkmate threat. So instead, we saw pawn to f4, just attacking the rook, just leaving this rook here, no problem, no problem at all. You can capture that, I'm not concerned with that, I just need this rook to move. So Chernikov did in fact capture the rook, like so, let me just get rid of this. And I should have had more space, but we are by the sea, and I don't have a large table to bring to the sea. And very calmly here, 
after uh, Bishop takes rook on f8. Neshmetinov just recaptured. That's necessary here. That is absolutely necessary. And the problem is for black that even with this exposed king, even with all everything going on, Chernikov just doesn't have counterplay. But at least he managed to stop this bishop. And if we capture this rook, uh, black can survive because he is up so much material, so it's fine to give some back. So he didn't move the rook. That would be uh, that would be devastating for his position. Instead he played the other rook to c8. What's that about? Well, this rook would just love to exchange itself off for this bishop. So Trinikov's uh, hope and dream is to just come here and capture this bishop. He's absolutely fine with the rook being recaptured. And Nishmetinov said no, 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 and played bishop to d4. No capture for you. And it was at this point uh, where we saw pawn to b5. And probably with engine resources, uh, you can find a better move. Um, it's not obvious what on earth you can really do here. Um, so I guess he's trying maybe to come here to kill this bishop, use the rook uh, similar to the other rook. It's not exactly clear what the plan is. It is also not clear um, what the alternative would be. So we saw from Nishmetinov, knight to g5. This attacks f7, would, along with the bishop, remember the sniper bishop, so rook to uh, c7, defense. However, there is, a, there is an absolutely amazing way to end this game. It's just absolutely mind-blowing and beautiful. And that is to ignore the fact that this pawn is defended and just capture it anyways. Check. And then we see rook. So we saw bishop takes f7 check and rook takes f7. And how do we finish the game? Well, Neshmetinov played can you see the move? Rook to h8 with check. But wait a minute. Wasn't that supposed to be checkmate? Oh, the rook is still blocking the bishop. So Chernikov can just capture this rook and be up, let's just say, a lot of material. So we saw rook h8 check and king takes h8. And now black has four pawns, a queen and two rooks versus seven pawns and a bishop and a knight. So queen, rook, rook, bishop, knight. And of course this was the end of the game. Nishmetinov could see that his position was hopeless, he had no more pieces left, and so he resigned. Do you believe that? I hope not, because it's not true. We saw knight captures f7, that is check. King went to g8. Knight captures queen on d8. And here we see just like the most satisfying asmr -y, to me at least, little touch. So after knight takes d8, takes the queen on d8, rook takes 
on e4. Attacking this bishop and this pawn. And just in time, the knight goes back to c6, defending the bishop. So the swans can see the position is hopeless. They fly away. And uh, Trenikov tried one last shot. Rook takes on uh, f4 with a check. And we simply saw king coming out the board to e2. And at this point, the game is just over. We have four pawns and a rook versus five pawns and two minor pieces. That is an insurmountable advantage to white. There's no counterplay. Uh, this rook cannot overpower these two pieces. And even these four pawns are disconnected. They cannot protect each other. Um, while these three pawns are connected and can protect each other, and these two pawns are protected and can defend each other. So, in this position, Chernikov resigned, and that is the end of the most perfect, uh, amazing, cool queen sacrifice in the history of chess. I hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching. I hope I will see you in the next video. Bye.